there's a good chance you've never heard of a metal known as neodymium. But without it, you can be sure these wind turbines would not work. Welcome to this week's environment show on rare earths, 17 metals that have changed the way we live. Their unique properties used to light our smartphones, power our hybrid cars, and even turn the blades in these turbines. Coming up in the show, rare earths are not so rare after all, but can Japan's deep sea discovery alter the global market for these valuable elements? Next, China does the world's dirty work. The country's monopoly on rare earths mining has devastating consequences for Inner Mongolia. And finally, salvaging what little rare earths we have in Europe. We head to Isberg in France, where the metals are being carefully extracted for recycling. French cancer victims won't be entitled to government compensation over the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. Judges have decided that their illnesses weren't linked to radiation from the power plant following the 1986 accident. Anti-nuclear groups have accused the French government of downplaying the risks of the radioactive cloud to protect the country's powerful nuclear industry. Oil giants ExxonMobil and Rosneft have struck a multi-billion dollar deal to explore the Arctic. But Americans and Russians aren't the only ones heading north for oil. Several drilling rigs have already sprung in the Arctic Ocean. Environmentalists are concerned about the increased dangers of deep-sea drilling in the region. According to them, rigs wouldn't be able to withstand a collision with an iceberg. They also warn that potential spills would be much more difficult to clean up in such inhospitable environments. Berlin has Europe's cleanest air, according to a new study. German environmental groups ranked 17 major European cities on their actions to reduce soot particles in the air between 2005 and 2010. Scandinavian cities ranked high with Copenhagen and Stockholm in the top three. Paris lagged behind for not doing enough to tackle the problem, and London for reversing several clean air initiatives despite being the next Olympic host. Rome was ranked last, making it the worst European city to breathe in. Despite their name, rare earths are not actually rare at all. Even less so after Japanese explorers discovered vast deposits on the floor of the Pacific Ocean. The only problem, accessing this treasure trove is both expensive and potentially damaging to the environment. At prestigious Tokyo University, Professor Yasuhiro Kato is the steward of a precious treasure, rare earth samples. So-called rare earths are extremely useful in various advanced technology industries, from TV flat screens to hybrid and electric cars. It is difficult to say how much these samples are worth. But what I can say is that the density of rare earths is 2,000 particles per million, which is very high. This powder comes from the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, more than 3,000 meters deep. The rare earths deposit Professor Kato recently discovered around Tahiti and Hawaii could well change the balance of world trade in the minerals. We know that there is the equivalent of 800 times the current world reserves of rare earths in this area. But China, which supplies more than 95% of the planet's rare earths, has time to prepare for this new competition. For now, no technology exists to enable rare earth mining so deep under the ocean. Still, the professor and his team are optimistic. China is likely to dominate the rare earth market for some time to come. Rare earth prices skyrocketed after China slashed export quotas at the end of 2010. Japan, the world's biggest importer of rare earths, is worried. I don't know if Japan was directly targeted by this measure, but it is true that Japanese companies use a lot of rare earths, so they have been particularly affected. Some analysts suspect China may be using rare earth export policy as part of a hidden agenda toward Japan, its historical rival. My idea is that China is limiting rare earth exports in order to force Japanese companies to build plants in China and manufacture items made with rare earths there directly. One solution for Japan is to try to do without rare earths altogether. 
At the Tokyo University of Science, students have taken up the challenge to design a rare earth free engine. Are you proud of this engine? Yes, very proud. It is an important project for Japan. The benefit of this engine is that it doesn't use rare earths, but mainly iron and copper. Those materials are much cheaper than rare earths. For Japan, rare earths are becoming the focus of a global economic struggle in which it must prevail. Its world famous car and electronics industries are at stake. Europe itself has no rare earths of its own, which is why recycling factories like this one in France are trying to extract the metals from electronic waste. Meanwhile, in China, mining is thriving. But the country's monopoly over the rare earths industry has not come without a cost. In the southern Gobi Desert, Baltou is a dusty city built on a treasure. Every day, thousands of trucks come to pick up rare earths extracted from nearby mines. Once processed in the city's factories, the rare earths will provide half of the world's consumption and huge wealth for the region. But in neighboring villages, desperate and sick residents faced our cameras. 70% of villagers have problems with their teeth. Our teeth are falling out, it's very painful. The Environment Protection Bureau told us not to drink the water anymore, but disease has already spread. Teeth problems, skin disease, and above-average cancer rates plague Balto. Here, people blame the rare earths industry and the high levels of chemicals used for extraction and refinement. The storage of these products is especially problematic. Next to the village, one has to climb over a wall of sand to discover the resident's nightmare. Here is the Baotou Toxic Waste Lake. It's 600 square kilometers. Factories release tons of acid here every day, and studies reveal the presence of thorium, a highly radioactive element. The chemical contaminates underground water and even the air people here breathe. When the wind blows from the east or from the southeast, it carries large amounts of dust to the fields. For four years, no plants or crops have been able to grow here, and farmers have had to give up their land. The rare earths industry has polluted other parts of China, but the issue of Balto and its liquid waste is especially worrying to environmentalists. The problem with this is that it's very poorly constructed. Were uh, and if uh, this wall is to rupture, the Yellow River only sits 10 kilometers away from this uh, Tailing Lake itself, and it will have a devastating uh, impact on the environment of not only the Yellow River, but all the areas around it. There is not one single step in the rare earth metal uh, uh, mining process that is not disastrous to the environment. China has started to pay attention to environmental problems caused by the rare earths industry. Beijing wants to reduce and centralize production to make it cleaner. Countries importing China's rare earths say the government may be trying to inflate prices. These countries used to buy rare earths from China at a low price with little concern about the consequences on local Chinese residents. Other countries around the world have been trying to challenge China's stranglehold over the industry. Australia and the United States are leading efforts to up their production, reopening existing mines and constructing new ones. Meanwhile, in Europe, the feasibility of recycling the metals has been thrown into question. Inside these light bulbs, a fraction of a gram of a precious treasure. Rare earths, rare, therefore expensive between $100 and $7,000 per kilogram. This company in the north of France tries to extract the metals for recycling, a task that is not always easy. For example, in low energy light bulbs, there's a mixture of rare earths with different concentrations. What's difficult is to extract one in isolation. Extracting rare earths isn't hard in itself, but to extract a particular rare earth is difficult. After several months of research, the operation was put on hold. It seems there's more money to be made recycling copper and gold. Have you seen a lot of places recycling rare earths today? No, it's not a coincidence. You can't work in a business that is not profitable. We don't have evidence that it's worthwhile to extract the rare earths for reuse. This is the only European company in the market. Rodia, based in the west of France. 
the enterprise has taken a chance, investing heavily in new technology. It has the backing of the French government. With no rare earth mines of its own, Europe has every reason to help the industry succeed. This bowl holds a mixture of rare earths. Once isolated, a lucrative asset indeed. Certain metal prices have increased eightfold in just two years. This sample weighs around 500 grams. It's worth about $1,500 today. And if you come back next week, I suspect it will be even more. But in reality, there's not enough material produced in the mines to meet current global demand and even less available for recycling. To make recycling work, it's necessary to first of all have the product. And today, we don't produce enough, not nearly enough to meet global demand, which is growing every year at a rapid rate. It's too soon to give up. The recycling sector could find its feet in the next five years. Starting with a turbine and ending with a mobile phone, rare earths may seem invisible, but they're everywhere around us. That brings us to the end of the show. Thanks for joining us here on Environment, and we'll see you next week.